97% white men. It's that way for a reason. This is New York City. We lead the world in everything, except the fire department. Once you go to a fire, everything becomes colorblind. Yeah. Is if you, when you put the mask on, nobody can see your face. It's difficult for the person being stepped on to say this guy stepped on me when he didn't leave any footprints. And that's what the issue is. How do you say it's racism? You feel it in your gut. Yeah. Welcome to this hearing of the Committee on Fire and Criminal Justice Services. Today we're going to be looking at uh, the progress or lack of progress we've made with respect to diversifying the New York City Fire Department. Over the course of the years, as uh, the black moved forward and made his advances, racism became more and more subtle. Uh, and this is the kind of racism that we faced in our, in our times. So that was one of the reasons the creators of the Vulcan Society, the Black Firefighters Association, to organize a resistance to the racism there. Being left in the basements of uh, burning buildings, you know, having your coat cut to ribbons by uh, with a razor, or the bed by the toilet that nobody will sleep in. After you finish sleeping in it, the next night nobody else gonna sleep in it because the black firefighter slept there. That was the time during the, the whole civil rights movement. And it brought tension between the blacks and the white firefighters. And then the riots, you know, especially the Martin Luther King riots. When he was shot, they burned down everything. And, uh, you know, we, we spent 48 hours fighting fires at a retirement, you know what I mean? <laughs> we had an opportunity to, to show the skills we had at being firefighters. And the department did to blacks what the country does to blacks. When they have problems, they ship all the blacks into the busy places because the white firemen don't like the, the bricks and the bottles being thrown at them. But the strangeness about the fellow that you worked with, the Caucasian that you worked with in the firehouse, I don't care how racist he may have been, but he would give his life up to save some little black child. They were a strange group of men. New York City has the smallest percentage of women and minorities than all of the fire departments in the nation's 10 largest cities. You know, society has evolved and the FDNY is still in the Stone Age. That makes no sense to me. I would tell the young black firefighters, if you ever want to get even, don't ever take anybody down the cellar, get promoted. This is the last time you see this badge because today they're going to change this to a lieutenant's badge. Being in the fire department was a way for a lot of blacks to move closer to the middle class. But I can remember to this day the sense of pride with the uniform. And the, that kind of thing goes through your whole career. When you put on a uniform, you feel a couple of feet taller. Today's a good day for the fire department. And that never leaves. Uh, these are the days that maybe you should make the headlines. You were something special. I mean, you put on the gun, somebody says, are you a fireman? She said, oh, I've never seen, now here go people living in the inner city here, said, I've never seen a black firefighter. The fire department liked you to think that there's this big homogeneous family. You know, but the family exists when you're out doing, fighting what we refer to as the Red Devil. Once you're in the firehouse, and there's no emergency, no fire to go to. You're a microcosm of that larger society. To sit here and, and try to let the people of the city of New York think that we did something successful, I think is misleading. Well, you know, I'm, I'm speaking about the efforts. 
I'm not saying to you that I think you know, that's five percent, four percent, or whatever that that's successful. I'm not saying that. Right. And, and when is, you talk about efforts, when you talk about efforts, that's not a great indication of effort either. Me and Mike have spent a lot of times on the street uh, approaching brothers. Listen, you know, fill out this application, fill out this form, and we'll send you the application, and so on and so forth. And one thing that we always hear from brothers is they say, man, I ain't going to get that job. You know, I'm not going to get the job. For this job Very here, true. you got to have 30 college credits, you know? Really? Yeah, you know, it's supposed to be a five, okay. you know. Wow. And it's justifiable. It's a justifiable yeah. feeling. The fire department resists change, just as America did, you know. America changed because America was forced to change. The fire department has yet to be forced to change. I'm just really disappointed um, at the lack of even enthusiasm. There seems to be this malaise and this, well, we did a little bit better than we've ever done um, type of mentality um, when you look at the numbers and it's a failure. We'll have gone our whole career doing 20, 20 25, uh, me, almost 30 years, and uh, only seeing the black population in the fire department drop. There were hundreds and hundreds of years where we weren't even in a position to take care of our families, you know. But now we are, and if you can get a good job like this, you know, again, you can take care of yourself and your family very well. And um, I just want to see more black men and women sharing in this.